Well, we've got wonderful looking tomatoes. We've done everything right. We've used gyps and we've used the right fertilizer. We've got them drip irrigation. But I think we're going to have a horrible problem with blossom in rot this year, and I'll tell you why. But first, let's go over some best practices to control the blossom in rot. So what causes blossom in rot is not enough calcium in the fruit of that plant. Calcium is responsible for building cell wall tissues in the fruit. And when we have adequate calcium in that fruit, we do not have blossom in rot. Now, it's a whole nother story about how we get the calcium to that fruit. Calcium cannot be banked in that plant, the leaves, and move to the fruit when needed. We have to put calcium down and move it to the fruit when the opportunity arises and when that fruit needs that calcium. Calcium is moved through the bloodstream of the plant. We can't move it backwards. Therefore, your calcium sprays, your blossom in rot sprays do not work. We have to put calcium at the root system, move it through the vascular system of the plant and to that fruit when the fruit needs it. Now, there's several ways we can do that. We can use calcium nitrate, even your well water has calcium in it, and we can use calcium sources such as gypsum to put at the soil or in the drip irrigation for that plant to pull it up into the plant. So it's calcium, folks, it's not Epsom salt. Epsom salt is magnesium sulfate, and if anybody ever tells you to put magnesium sulfate on your plant for blossom and rot, that's the time to pull the plug. Don't listen to them anymore because they're gonna cause you more harm than good. Magnesium and calcium both have the same charged ion and they compete with one another in soil structure. If you apply Epsom salt, it's going to push out your calcium, so it's going to make your problem worse. And if somebody tells you to put the egg in the hole when you're planting your tomatoes, turn them off, unplug it. Bad info. That egg right there is not going to give you any calcium during the growing season to combat blossom and rot. Now there's a little bit of calcium in that eggshell, I'll give you that, but it's not going to break down and be available to that plant during that first year growing. Maybe the next year, so if you got crushed up eggshells and you want to throw them in your garden for a year or two down the line, that's fine. But do not be misled to thinking that is going to solve your blossom and rot on this year's crop. Now this on the other hand is going to be one of your best friends good rich compost. So let's say you did a soil sample and your soil sample shows your calcium levels are high in your soil. Well that doesn't necessarily mean that, that calcium is going to be available to the plant. But years ago I did a little trial where I added copious or large amounts of compost and I seen it made a big difference in my blossom in rot. And the reason is because all the good acids that are in this compost right here help to break down that calcium and helps that root of that tomato absorb that calcium. So good large amounts of compost are going to make that calcium available to your plant. All right, so here's where I think our problem is going to come in. We've had a lot of cool nights this spring, cooler than normal. We've been in the 40s and 50s at nighttime almost every night. Now it's supposed to warm up in the next few days, but we've already got a pretty good fruit set here at those cool night levels. Now we know tomatoes do not take up calcium when those nights are really cool. So even though we did everything right, I don't think the plant has absorbed that calcium there for those plants. So I'm expecting a severe problem on my bottom crop. Now hopefully the weather will warm up a little bit more and we can save the middle crop and the top crop, but I am expecting a bad crop on bottom just because of the weather, nothing, anything we did. Now here's something you could do to help you with that. And I did that this year, not necessarily for the blossom in rot. I did it for another reason, but I think it's gonna help me tremendously on my blossom in rot problem. So I planted me an early crop, a short row of an early crop, and then I planted me another crop to come in a little bit later. And I think this is going to be my saving grace right here. I don't expect this later crop to have near the problem with blossom in rot as I did earlier because our nighttime temperatures are going to be a lot higher when these here start setting fruit. So stagger your tomato plantings two to three weeks apart. That way, if we do have some type of unusual weather, you're gonna be able to save some and have plenty of tomatoes. We expect to have problems here. We don't expect to have problems on the later crop there. We normally don't have blossom end rot on problems after that first crop comes in, but I expect it to be more than usual this year. 
So I guess my point is don't get frustrated if you did everything right and you still got some blossom in right. So there's some things that's just out of our control. Don't fall to the myths out there and don't use eggs and don't use Epsom salt for blossom in rot. You want to use gypsum, you want to use calcium nitrate, and you want to use good, plenty of good compost, and you want to put droop irrigation and feed those plants well. Do that, hope for the best, maybe we'll get some good weather, and you can be as successful as anybody growing good tomatoes.